edema is accumulation of extra fluid in the interstitial space or body cavity so increasing the interstitial fluid volume the extracellular fluid contains one third of body water which is about 14 liter two third of the body water being the intracellular which is 28 liter so the extracellular fluid two portions are the vascular compartment and the interstitial compartment in which there occur extra fluid accumulation the interstitial compartment comprises of 75 percent of the extracellular fluid which is about 10.5 liters and the blood plasma that contains 25 percent of the extracellular fluid which is about 3.5 liters causes of the edema are number one decreased vascular plasma on cortic pressure number two increase hydrostatic pressure number three increase capillary pressure or number four capillary endothelial damage number five lymphatic obstruction number six venous obstruction and decrease arterial volume and decrease vascular resistance also cause edema we'll discuss all these causes in a moment the types of edema may be generalized or localized pitting or non-pitting and it may be transudate or an accident. Generalized edema is spitting all over and leads to puffiness of the face with periorbital edema. In generalized edema, patient complains of difficulty in putting on shoes. Anasarca is also gross generalized edema. Now, organ structure malformation causing edema. Number one, congestive cardiac failure. So what happens in congestive cardiac failure? In congestive cardiac failure, there is increased venous pressure and increased lymphatic flow or obstruction to drainage. That causes increased capillary pressure. So the cause of increased capillary pressure in CCF is increased venous pressure and increased lymphatic flow and obstruction. That causes edema. So what happens in impaired left ventricular function? There may occur peripheral edema or pulmonary edema. How does it occur? Let's discuss this. In systolic heart failure, there is incomplete ventricular emptying. And in diastolic heart failure, there is inadequate ventricular relaxation. In both type of systolic and diastolic heart failure, there is a pressure overload on the right ventricle. So the blood flows from the right atrium to right ventricle through the pulmonary artery to the lungs and goes back to the left atrium through the pulmonary vein to the left ventricle. This is the normal circulation of the blood. Since these are high pressure chambers, if there is an overload, the pressure goes back to the right ventricle and to the systemic venous pressure because the veins are low capacitance vessels. So increased right ventricular and systemic venous pressure leads to peripheral edema and number two increased pulmonary arterial pressure in both these types of failure causes incomplete rv emptying and back pressure causes pulmonary edema so either pulmonary edema or peripheral edema because of increased venous pressure. Now, the role of ANP and BMP. In congestive cardiac failure, distended atria and ventricle of the heart produce atrial natriuretic peptide and brain natriuretic peptide respectively. BNP is also produced in the brain. So what do they do? ANP and BMP are natural diuretics. They decrease the sodium and water reabsorption in the proximal tubule that leads to diuresis, preventing edema formation. They also decrease renin, angiotensin and aldosterone production. And number three, ANP and BNP, the natriuretic peptides are vasodilators. So they dilate vein, decrease the central venous pressure and decrease cardiac output. And number two, they dilate arteries that decrease the systemic arterial blood pressure. So in cases of CCF, ANP and BNP prevents edema formation natural diuretics, normal and abnormal natriuretic peptide levels. A normal natriuretic peptide level is 100 pg per ml and a level of more than 100 pg per ml is suggestive of congestive cardiac failure and a level of more than 450 pg per ml is strongly suggestive 
of the congestive heart failure and a level of more than 600 pg per ml is the average natri uretic peptide level in chf congestive heart failure now the second condition that may cause generalized edema is nephritic syndrome and this occurs in glomerulonephritis and diabetic glomerulosclerosis and hypersensitivity reactions in nephrotic syndrome there is heavy protein loss of more than 3.5 grams per day along with hyperlipidemia and edema so there leads to hypoalbuminemia and generalized edema and anasarca condition number 3 that causes edema is acute glomerulonephritis there occur protein urea hypertension and hematuria in acute glomerulonephritis that causes edema there is salt and water retention with normal to increase cardiac output the condition is very similar to cardiac output but to the congestive cardiac failure the salt and water retention with normal to increase cardiac output number 2 normal arteriovenous oxygen difference and the third difference with the congestive cardiac failure is pulmonary congestion with normal heart size heart size increases in congestive cardiac failure condition number 4 that causes edema is cirrhosis there are a jaundice spider angiomas abnormal lft ascites and edema of the lower limb initially on examination of cirrhosis the liver is shrunken due to fibrosis not enlarged and there occurs hypoproteinemia in cirrhosis because liver fails to produce proteins including albumin the blockage of hepatic venous blood flow leads to venous congestion and obstruction to lymphatics with portal hypertension and there occur salt and water retention in cirrhosis why due to decrease metabolism of aldosterone aldosterone produced by adrenal cortex and metabolized by the liver in liver failure it's not metabolized so its toxicity increases and causes edema formation and hypertension number 5 edema of malnutrition there occur hypoproteinemia caloric deficiency and hypokalemia so there is protein calorie malnutrition in edema of malnutrition there occur peripheral AV fistula formation so that AV fistula formation leads to decreased systemic perfusion and arterial pressure that increases the edema formation so peripheral AV fistula formation occur in malnutrition what's refeeding edema in malnutrition in malnutrition increased diet increases insulin production and that causes an increase in sodium reabsorption from the renal tubule that causes increase in edema so refeeding in malnutrition increases insulin production that causes increased sodium reabsorption in the renal tubule